Christina piercings, pros, cons, buy a piercer, episode number 35. So stick around. new to the channel my name is Dave O I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994 I own and operate the Axiom body piercing studio here in Des Moines Iowa inside skin kitchen tattoo so when I talk to you about these things I'm talking with a level of expertise as someone who has done this piercing multiple times and helped people through the healing process um, just a little bit of a disclaimer before we get into this any further if you're unaware the Christina piercing is a female genital piercing. If you're easily offended or don't want to hear about female genital piercings um, or the female anatomy, then this is not the video for you. Also, if you are located in an area where this might not be age appropriate, I would suggest that you find something else to watch. If you're interested in piercing and tattooing, we have a number of videos on this channel. Um, that might be a little bit more appropriate. If you're looking for any type of sexual gratification, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Uh, this is solely for educational purposes for those considering getting a Christina piercing and maybe their partners or someone who wants to learn more about this particular piercing. With that all, all out of the way, let's talk about location. The Christina piercing is located at the top of the female genitalia. Um, basically where the uh, outer labias or labia minoras connect, dead center, straight up. It is a very anatomy specific um, piercing. If you don't have the correct anatomy for this piercing, it will probably not work out. And I will get into that a little bit more later. Um, usually done with a curved barbell or a surface to surface barbell. Now let's get into why you're here. The pros, the cons, the advantages, disadvantages. We'll start with the pros, um, the advantages. Number one, enhances the look of the area, makes it more attractive, uh, more beautiful, etc. Number two, this piercing has a long, fairly long history of healing with little or no issues um, other than migration and rejection, which we'll get into later. Um, it is an e uh, number three. It is an easy heal. Uh, this piercing generally isn't prone to infection or other problem. They usually heal out fairly quickly, roughly about six to eight weeks. Um, generally, if you take care of it properly, you're not going to have any issues. Number four. This piercing does not affect lifestyle as much as other piercings do or sexual activity for that matter because it is located so high on the genitalia Really short of sleeping directly on the piercing, I don't understand why you would have issues with this. Um, there's certain activities that you may find uncomfortable that involve contact with the area, like motorcycle riding maybe, or uh, horseback riding, I don't know, certain amusement park rides, that sort of thing. But for the most part, this is not going to affect lifestyle as much as even a simple ear piercing would. Number five. This piercing, nobody needs to know you have it unless you tell them or they're a sexual partner. It is easy to hide this piercing. Uh, most people don't run around showing their genitalia to other people. So if you work at a professional business where it's frowned upon to have body modifications or you live in a conservative part of the world where that might be an issue, this is a good choice for you because it's something you can have for yourself enjoy the uh, piercing itself and the experience and not have to worry about it affecting your day-to-day uh, -day life. Okay, with the advantages out of the way, let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages. Number one, this piercing is very, very, very much so anatomy specific. If you don't have the correct anatomy for this piercing, it will not heal correctly. For those that have watched the channel, you know I've explained that women tended, the female genitalia tends to be in kind of one of two categories. It is either a hill or it's a valley. Um, and, we're, and all of them are kind of in between those two extremes. With this piercing, it needs to be more of a valley. The genitalia needs to be more inside the body with that kind of outer ridge around it that is the outer labia 
or labia majora. And at the top, there should be a definite kind of uh, almost cliff-like or um, structure that comes down. Uh, if it isn't, this piercing is going to be increasingly more prone to rejection and migration, where the body just pretty much says, hey, it's easier for me to push this out than to heal this. Uh, no matter what type of jewelry you use, this is always an issue. So it's very important when you do see your piercer that they do go through a consultation and, record, uh, and take a look at your uh, anatomy and determine whether or not it's a good fit for you. Number two, um, this piercing will make you more acceptable to STDs um, even after it heals. Uh, you do have hard metal in soft tissue. There was always a possibility of tears being caused during sexual activity. Then you have an exchange of a virus and you get an STD. Lucky you. Um, so you do need to practice safe sex the way you're supposed to, which means latex barriers um, until you've both been tested and you know you both are clean or you know don't have disease. You can still be dirty and have an STD or not have an STD. That's possible. Be a bad hygiene, I guess. Anyway, um, number three, you are pretty much limited to two types of jewelry style. Those types would be either a curved barbell or um, a surface to surface barbell, which is shaped like this. You can't put, uh, I have had clients try to wear rings in it and we immediately started to have issues with it getting caught on things and starting to reject. Um, stra standard barbells tend to be a little too uh, stringent. They don't fit into the curvature. They don't fit into the body. Um, so that's kind of your only two choices. The good news on that is there is a large variety of different ends and different colors and materials that you can work with. Number four, unlike a lot of genital piercings, this piercing is solely just for looks. There's really no sexual gratification with this beyond the imagination and whether or not if you make it, I guess if it makes you feel more sexy, more sexual or what have you, then yes, maybe this does enhance it. But for the most part, there's no physical contact with any sensitive areas, so it's not going to cause a lot of uh, increased sensation. It is more for, look at my beautiful lady, and I'm decorating her. Um, number five, this piercing can bleed off and on in some cases up to five days. It is a blood rich area. It's one of the reasons why they heal so quickly and are not prone to problems or infection. Um, so wearing a sanitary napkin or pad is probably going to be a requirement for that first week or so. With that all out of the way, um, let's move on to what I generally would give you as a consultation. If you came into my studio and said, Davo, hey, I would like to get a Christina piercing. The first thing I'm going to tell you is the average healing time is roughly six to eight weeks. However, I do suggest treating it like a healed piercing, healing piercing for a minimum of three months, which will involve using a sterile saline spray or mixing up uh, sea salt in distilled water and doing compresses or soaks for five to 10 minutes and then rinsing afterwards. Also, it's not a bad idea to clean the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap, such as proven or satin, at least once a day, twice if you feel like you've contaminated the area. Also, um, cross-contamination prevention. Most of this is common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends whenever possible. Really, the only time you have any contact with that piercing is when you are applying the saline or cleaning it and checking the tightness of the ends just to make sure they don't come unscrewed. Um, keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So anytime you touch the area, it's a good idea to wash your hands before you do so. Um, no oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on you around the piercing for a minimum of six months. That doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That just means that you need to practice safe sex. Latex barriers um, for at least that first six months just to be on the safe side. After that, anytime you switch partners, of course, you are more acceptable to STDs. So you do want to use a latex barrier until you've both been tested. Um, sex whenever you're comfortable. Uh, 
gentle at first. If it hurts to do something, try something else. Uh, or take a rest and try something else. Um, as far as lubricants, I suggest water-based lubricants. Stay away from any, anything that has spermicide on it or in it. Um, also avoid warming gels, fragrances, anything that may, that's supposed to stimulate the area. Stay away from any of those additives. Just plain old fashioned water-based lubricant or your natural lubricants. Um, keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing. Um, also do not submerge the piercing of bodies of water. You can't control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. So no swimming until it's healed. No swimming. No. Uh, uh. Anyway, um, Keep pets away from it. Everybody laughs when I say that, but what I'm talking about more is keep them out of the bed. Uh, they tend to take all the contaminants that they come in contact with and immediately transfer that onto your clean linen, and then it could possibly come in contact with the piercing area, and then you have an infection. Additionally, it can bleed off and on for anywhere from five, roughly about three to five days, so I do suggest wearing a pad for that first week or sanitary napkin or panty liner. Just not only to cut down the likelihood of staining clothing and the embarrassment that that may cause and some weird and some strange explanations, but it adds a little bit of cushion to the area, which makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, also, uh, cuts down the amount of moisture in the area, which cuts down the amount of bacteria, which cuts down your likelihood of becoming infected when it's most acceptable to it, which is during that first week or so. <sighs> Now, uh, some additional things that I'm gonna tell you about is uh, you do wanna stay away from activities that may be uncomfortable. Um, it's generally a good idea to take a couple of days off and just do nothing, just lounge around the house in a pair of comfy pants. Um, it's one of those spirits things maybe to do on a Friday before a three day weekend. Uh, you wanna kind of avoid activities like, uh, I would stay out of the amusement park for, for a couple weeks. Um, also, uh, avoid things like horseback riding, motorcycle riding, bicycling, all of those things, anything that's going to have contact with that piercing area, it's not going to be very comfortable at first. Understand this piercing is really high on the genitalia, so it doesn't really affect things as much, mainly as far as sexual activity or, uh, walking or any of that. But, you know, certain things do come in contact with it and it doesn't feel good. Clothing-wise, loose-fitting clothing is always best. Um, keep the piercing kind of stationary with undergarments. But as far as, like, outerwear, stay away from things like jeans that are really super tight or come in contact with it or have very, very stiff seams um, until it's gone through its at least initial tender phase. Now, if you came in, uh, part of the consultation after I told you all this would be coming back into the studio area, right over there. I would ask you to disrobe and we would uh, look at your anatomy and decide whether or not you're a good ki candidate for this particular piercing. Uh, then we would have you fill out paperwork and then go through the process. Um, it's important uh, generally, and, and at that point, if you wanna put your clothes back on, that's perfectly fine. I always leave that up to the client. Um, this piercing is very anatomy specific. If you don't have the correct anatomy, it's not going to work. Um, it is probably going to reject. So it's important that you do research your piercer and that they do take that step to, uh, to, to determine whether or not you're going to be a good candidate and discuss that with you. So that's just about everything I can say about a Christina piercing at this point in time. If you have any questions or I brought up a new question or you'd like to add to the conversation, please leave a comment. Um, I usually answer them if I have time. Um, also, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one on body piercing and tattooing with a focus on education and a little bit of entertainment. Um, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to support the channel and support us, check out our merch store. Uh, we have various different uh, yeah, items there for sale from uh, plain old t-shirts to dog bandanas other than that uh everybody have a good day hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue and if you're in the des moines iowa area i hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future have a good day everybody we're all counting on you